so we were talking about steady state conduction okay in this chapter we till this point we have discussed uh, the steady state form of heat diffusion equation okay we have solved that steady state heat diffusion equation for few boundary conditions let's say for isothermal and we have got that the temperature profile is linear right in case of steady state 1D heat transfer with no heat generation and if you put some kind of heat source within the system you would be having a quadratic temperature profile right and yesterday we derived uh, an optimal thickness for insulation in case of pipes or wires basically that is something which is also known as radial systems okay so you are very clear about the assumptions which we can take for uh, establishing or developing a thermal circuit what is the condition you should have steady state conditions okay it means that q dot would remain constant right so now we would extend that to fin design okay uh, i am not talking about you uh, the core design concept of the fins but uh, we would be talking about how temperature profiles are developed what are the boundary conditions so let's talk about the mathematics first and then we would look at the practical aspect okay in this slide you can see you can see an animal okay some kind of fins are there on its back you may see this figure as well okay and similarly you may see some kind of extended surfaces from the original body original body is something else and then you have some extended surface uh, surfaces coming out of it okay now these extended surfaces are known as fins so these extended surfaces these are known as what fins okay so if you look at these things they are not there to save them from predator or let's say uh, to act like a prey in some situation but they also you can say they also assist them to maintain the heat transfer from their body okay and similar is the case for this application these kind of applications you might have seen and by the way a well known application which you can see in everyday life your engine you might have uh, found some kind of heat sink if you open your bonnet of your car you can see that okay and then there is a fan which can accelerate the heat transfer process okay so why those extended surfaces are there what is the need so i would talk about that one by one the problem is if you want to have some kind of heat transfer from a solid object let's say you want to have some kind of heat transfer from a solid object and you know that that heat transfer can occur only through convection isn't it so what is the governing law for uh, looking at convection that is newton's law of cooling okay so if you look at this newton's law of cooling this is the relationship so you need to play with those four parameters to increase this q dot convection right now the point is the surface temperature if some something is at some uh, temperature let's say you are talking about the engine wall shell of the engine let's say the outer wall it would it would be at a certain temperature you can't decrease that temperature okay why because you need to have that kind of combustion within that and you would maintain a certain temperature on that right may it be any system engine is just an example then can you change this t infinity outside air temperature you can't change it you can accelerate it like for example instead of having the natural convection you can have forced convection you can put a fan over there and you can just accelerate it but by the way by putting a fan on to that what you are trying to do you are not in decreasing or increasing t infinity you are playing with what h okay you are increasing the value of h right now there is again a limitation you can't put a bigger fan into the bonnet of your car you can't put that so there is a limitation 
now still let's say that limitation basically that for example that limitation says okay don't go beyond that size of the fan but still you need to increase the heat transfer process then what you can do so there is another option you can increase surface area okay you can increase surface area now how to increase that surface area can you make the engine bigger not at all can you make let's say the your pc bigger you can't do that right so sometimes you have limitation on the space as well so there is another option that you can have small surfaces extended from those bodies just like pins just like rods or let's say there are some other forms of fins as well we will talk about that so what you do is you can extend some surfaces out of the body and those surfaces are known as what pins and why are they uh, present over there to increase the heat transfer area and what parameter you are playing with to increase the surface area so i hope you understand the objective why do we need to design the fins in engineering applications is that clear so what is the need now the need is this is one kind of fin let's say now what is the problem just just look at a situation and think about it from the engineering approach okay engineering approach means you need to uh, use fundamental principles of engineering to get out some useful information out of the system now my point is some surface is extending from this wall let's say and this is just like a representative fin just assume it's a fin which is coming out of it just a rod like shape now the point is this is one end of the fin and this is the other one now this end of the fin would be at wall temperature isn't it why because it is sticking with the wall right obviously heat would flow from this point to this point in this direction and what would be the mechanism conduction okay now heat is going in this direction heat is going only in this direction i am not assuming that heat is going in this direction too although it can go it should go and it would go but the problem is we can always assume that our fins are cylinder bodies cylinder not c y l e n that is s l e n d e r cylinder body it means the aspect ratio of the cylinder is kind of very low right the diameter to length ratio is very small it means if your length is larger and diameter is smaller so what you can see is that the heat transfer would be more dominant in this direction the same condition where we were talking about 1d heat transfer okay so i would say that there would be 1d heat conduction which is going from this point to this point and then obviously what does that mean that at any cross section at any cross section what does that mean 1d 1d means at any cross section you would have same temperature isn't it otherwise if at any cross section you have two different temperatures obviously the heat would go in the radial direction as well okay so what we are assuming that heat is only going in this direction it means that any cross section you have same temperature and at the next cross section temperature would obviously be changing right now this is the surface and from this surface that heat would be convected away by the fluid outside you understand that so now there are two processes which are going on conduction and convection and that convect conduction is basically 1d from the wall to the other end of the fin and you can see that convection would be what that would that is from the surface area and that is being done by the surrounding fluid do you understand what is the basic principle right so this is how you can analyze it from the physical point of view now what is the objective the objective is we need to find out the temperature profile within the fin why because t infinity is known let's say you can always take it like 25 degree centigrade or unless you have put that fin into a certain kind of fluid you should know the temperature right now the point is that you have some kind of fin and obviously that fin 
the complete fin would not be at the same temperature the complete fin would not be at the same temperature now why would i say that because obviously when once you attach this fin with this wall this cross section <coughs> would would be having the same temperature as this wall but this side would be at a different temperature okay obviously the heat would start flowing from this point to this point and that heat is also being convected away by the surrounding fluid is it clear now the point is what is the principle principle says that q dot equals h a s t s minus t infinity now if you look at this cross section if you look at this cross section this t s is there now this temperature would be lower than this t s do you understand that this temperature i am talking about this temperature this temperature would be lower than this ts right that's why heat is flowing from this side to this side okay now if this temperature is lower at this point it means that this q dot would be smaller as you would uh, this would start becoming smaller as you go from this point to this point do you understand that or should i repeat it okay now see you have ts minus t infinity at this point this is basically dictating convection at this point once you go to this cross section let's say this temperature would be lower than ts isn't it let's say you have the same surface area no problem at all the surface is not basically converging kind of thing it is it is a constant cross sectional area so that temperature is less than ts t infinity remains the same so this quantity would become less do you understand that so as you go along the fin that temperature difference becomes smaller so if that temperature difference becomes smaller obviously q dot convection would become smaller do you understand that so it means the maximum heat transfer can occur at the base at the wall and minimum heat transfer can happen at at the tip of the fin at the other tip of the fin right this is the tip i am talking about so you can let me complete right so the point is what is the ideal situation ideal situation is that the complete fin should be at the same temperature isn't it the complete fin should be at the wall temperature so that you can have maximum heat transfer but it does not happen you know that it can't happen right because heat is coming in you attach the fin with the wall heat starts flowing from one point to the fin tip and then it is also being convected away by the surrounding fluid so obviously it can't happen so you need to compromise you need to compromise and to what extent you need to compromise obviously you can always quantify it if you know the temperature profile within the fin tip if you know the temperature values what is the temperature value at a certain point in, within the fin then you can see that how much heat transfer has been decreasing from let's say from the start to the end right so it means it is very important to have information about the temperature profile within the fin do you understand the objective or the need of the whatever we are going to study about okay so the problem is we need to find out temperature profile within the fin this is the question you see how a physical situation has been converted into a mathematical situation do you understand that so this is what you you call mathematical modeling that you see the physical system and then based upon some observations you can try to at least convert it into a mathematical problem okay now so temperature profile within the fin we need to find out i would go back to that slide and look at this side
what i can see is i do not assume any specific fin i can take a generalized fin okay where cross section is varying as you go along the length i just take a small piece you remember the infinite decimal volume small control volume you always start derivation using this thing from your calculus course as well you know the fundamentals so what you can do is i i take out a piece piece of this fin and represent it over there okay now you can see that the heat is coming into this volume from this side and going out from this side right and these two heat transfers are basically based upon conduction isn't it why because it is it is flowing within the solid okay now see on the surface you have what kind of heat transfer convection so just treat it as a control volume this small piece of fin just treat it as a control volume and you would see that whatever the heat is coming in that would be divided by into two portions one going away by convection and the other going out by conduction do you understand that so from this figure i can say that the qx which is coming in that should be equal to qx plus dx which is going out and then there is a small portion which is taken away by convection just look at it just look at that piece of fin and you can see that this is the heat which is coming in this is what is going out through conduction and this is something which is going out through convection do you understand that is there any other heat transfer quantity not at all okay so let's say no i'm just talking about the small piece i'm just talking about that small piece if you look at that small piece my point is obviously the heat is coming in through conduction but this part this other part the outer part of this control volume is also attached with the next solid part of the body so it has to be conducted away from that part okay so this is the point so what is by the way this qx let's write down all these quantities obviously they just just put a dot over there all the time i would not bother to put all the dots over there but you can understand we are talking about heat transfer rates till the time i i specifically tell you so q dot x would be equal to what this q dot x is from conduction obviously you need to go for fourier law so this is minus k a what because it's a 1d conduction so we can safely use that ordinary differential sign okay similarly qx plus dx obviously that qx plus dx would be equal to this plus or minus i can write it like this there would be some change isn't it there would be some change from the original qx dot and this is what you can write it from let's say chain rule what what do you call it okay taylor series so you can estimate this thing by this thing it means if you know qx dot at one point you can know the other point from taylor series thank you okay so this is taylor series right what 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 is this quantity this q dot x by dx so i can write it like this d by dx minus k a dt by dx can i write it like this simply take the derivative done okay <clears throat> and if i specifically describe this area what area it should be we are talking about conduction should it be the cross sectional area or the surface area this should be cross sectional area okay 
so we were talking about this this point let's assume that this k is not a function of x i assume that this k is not a function of x so i can take it outside so this would become d by dx and let me put a small subscript which represents that it is a cross sectional area ac and then you would have dt by dx understood okay now what would be dq convective that is basically equal to h that should be t minus t infinity i would not use the word ts why because ts is just a boundary condition now ts is just a boundary condition now so t t is a general parameter and similarly i need to also multiply it with da why why i am using that d because i am just talking about surface area of a small volume okay so this would be da s and now because this is convection so obviously you need to take care of the surface area only okay so you have all the parameters now can you combine them you can combine them like for example if i say this is minus k a c dt by dx just look at that energy principle energy conservation for that small control volume of the fin so energy conservation says that minus k a c dt by dx would be equal to minus k a c dt by dx and obviously then there was dq dot by dx into dx you remember that so that was what i'm sorry i i, I just need to put that minus sign over there so this should be minus k i and you know that why why i took it out from the expression because i do not say it to be a function of x okay so minus k d by dx ac dt by dx dx you understand that right and then this expression is it clear now these two sides are the same okay so what i can see is this would become k d by dx ac dt by dx equals h t minus ts das by dx <coughs> look at look at that dx that has come under das do you understand that okay so just look at this expression and i would write down the final form what you can have is you can have k ac d square t by dx square plus k dt by dx dac by dx equals obviously i need to take the derivative so there would be two terms out of it and then you would have ht minus t infinity das by dx and you can put it always a negative sign over there and put it equal to zero so this is the governing equation for temperature profile within the fin
right this is a governing equation and just come down to a the expression which is given in your book and it is more specific or more simplified d square t by dx square plus 1 over ac dac by dx dt by dx minus 1 over ac h over k DAS by DX TS minus by the way this is not TS I am sorry equals zero clear you can see I just divided the all the terms by KAC okay it looks nice not at all okay now you can see you can see that this is a non linear differential equation it can become non linear can it become non linear by the way should i say it's a non linear equation come on look at it very carefully and tell me is it a non linear equation what is the condition yes coefficient should not be the function of temperature so is there any coefficient which is a function of temperature is area a function of a temperature is h a function of temperature it can be but generally you do not take it like as a function of temperature it can be right but we we generally represent it as a constant for some practical situation so it's a linear equation seemingly it's a linear equation and then what's the order of this equation second order so seemingly we can say that it is <coughs> second order linear ode so by looking at the order can you tell me how many boundary conditions are required two boundary conditions and what those boundary conditions should be one boundary condition at wall and the other at boundary condition at the tip why because it is going in the x direction isn't it so you need to have two boundary conditions at the two extreme values of x one extreme value which is zero you can start fin uh, at x equal 0 from the wall and then what is the maximum one that is the fin tip okay and you are talking about uh, temperature profile within the fin right so two boundary conditions how many initial conditions yes is there any temperature term over there no sorry temporal term over there any d by dt not at all we are talking about steady state conditions okay so this is going to be zero is that understood any question yes so you know that two boundary conditions are required <coughs> right now those boundary conditions can be given in the form of temperature or flux there are you can say two physical parameters which can be used as boundary conditions for any thermal system right so <coughs> we will talk about those boundary conditions after some time let's say after 5 6 minutes or 10 minutes what i would do now is i would just find out the temperature profile for a uniform cross sectional area fin just to allow you guys to see a relatively simpler expression okay so fins with uniform cross sectional area okay what was the equation d square t by dx square 
वन ओवर ए सी डी ए सी बाई डी एक्स सॉरी दिस वुड बी एच बाय के सो यूनिफॉर्म क्रॉस सेक्शनल एरिया वट डज दैट मीन If it is a uniform cross-sectional area, <coughs> this would become zero. Okay, and for uniform cross-sectional area, let's say, just consider it as a cylindrical body, a small rod. Let's say it it can have a circular cross-sectional area, it can have a rectangular cross-sectional area, right? Any any cross-sectional area is possible, but the point is it is not varying as you go along the fin. by the way for these kind of fins let's say i am just taking an example of this fin what is the surface area in this case 2 by rl r is the radius and l is the length can i represent it as perimeter multiplied by length <coughs> can i represent it represent it as perimeter multiplied by length and if i if i just represent this as as a function of x obviously as i move along x i would write it as perimeter multiplied by x isn't it as you go along the length that would be perimeter multiplied by x okay instead of the taking the complete length you just take it in steps okay so if you look at this factor so das by dx would be equal to what and this p is what A C would be constant. Just look at this rod, and consider you are at this point. This is attached with the wall. Let's say this is this is basically wall, or you can call it like base as well. And this is the fin tip. Is cross sectional area changing? No. Is A S changing as you move along the length? Surface area is. increasing as you go along the length surface area would be increasing why because x is increasing okay and how you can represent that das by dx equals p so finally i would come up with this expression that for fins of uniform cross sectional area we have this temperature governing equation d square t by dx square and then you would have h P by K A C, and then finally you would have T minus T infinity equal zero. So it's a simpler equation. Okay. So now you can see that this term would be like a constant term. this term would be like a constant h is a constant p perimeter is a constant right k is a constant thermal conductivity ac is a constant cross sectional area so this whole term is constant i can write this thing as d square by dx square and i represent this complete term as m square i say that this hp by kac i represent it as some term which is m square m is a parameter and i take it i represent it uh, as the square and this is t minus t infinity equal 0 so it becomes even simpler okay now what is the unknown unknown is t but we have something as a difference if i introduce another variable and i say that theta is equal to t minus t infinity what would be uh, d theta by dx and what would be d square theta by dx square is 
is it understood very simple change of variable you have been doing it in your calculus course so finally i can write this thing as this equation as d square theta by dx square plus m square theta equals zero. Sign would be what? Negative where? Why should it be negative? Okay, I'm sorry. Oh, sign. This you are talking about this thing. Okay, thank you. This is negative sign. Okay, so this would be negative sign. Understood? Now you might have seen those kind of equations in your differential equations course. Very familiar, famous form of differential equations. Do you remember something like homogeneous differential equation, second order? Yes. And you would see this form in, I think, your vibrations course as well. If you attach a mass with a spring only, the governing equation of the mass would be following this form. Just, just remember this sentence, and see once you you would be doing your vibrations course, you would see that equation in the very first lecture, or let's say in the second lecture. Okay, so it is a second order equation. Now, okay, just let me put another slide over there. Okay, so we have this governing equation. square theta by dx square plus m square theta minus m square theta. I'm sorry for that. Still, it is a big problem, this plus minus. So what that th theta was? Theta was t minus t infinity. Obviously, you know how many boundary conditions do you need? Two boundary conditions. So if I ask you, what would be theta at the base or the wall, let's say? Obviously, that would be TS or just use the word base because it is the base of the fin and then the other one is the fin tip, okay? You would use these two uh, terminologies. So, I would represent it as TB minus T infinity, right? And obviously, the surface temperature would be known to you. The surface temperature would be known to you. Okay, you can't put a fin on some kind of heat source like the heater. Obviously, you would attach with, with, with some wall. Okay, so you know the temperature. So you can say that this boundary condition is kind of fixed. Fixed does not mean I am talking about some kind of mechanics of materials. I am just talking about fixed means it is on the base, you would have same boundary conditions all the time for fins. Right? And on the fin tip, there are four possibilities. 
on the fin tip you have four possibilities to describe the boundary condition let me explain it for example this is the fin and this is the base you know at this point theta equals theta b and you need to know theta as at fin tip so we need to know what is theta at tip and i have told you there are four boundary conditions now what do you mean by four boundary condition the four boundary condition means that how many uh, what are the types of the boundary conditions for any conductive thermal system or let's say for any system thermal system there are two either you describe temperature or you describe flux okay now for example i can describe temperature at the tip i can describe temperature at the tip okay otherwise you know the mechanism that heat would start flowing from one point to the other obviously it would take some time but once it's established heat would be start flowing with a constant uh, let's say q dot and at the tip for example you know the temperature so it means you are treating uh, the tip as an isothermal surface right so this is a drishley condition as far as that mathematical point of view is concerned so drishley condition is there so t you can describe the other one is you see that that on the fin tip just treat it as a control surface and you see that the heat is coming from one side through conduction and the other side the heat is being taken away by convection isn't it the convection would be taking place at that fin tip as well okay so whatever is coming in it goes out right now this is one condition the other condition is i say that that the fin tip is insulated it's another form of uh, you can say neiman boundary condition isn't it what is neiman boundary condition you put the flux equals zero and that flux is basically dependent on dt by dx okay similarly there is another condition we can assume that the fin is very long fin is very long how do we mathematically describe it and what is the advantage we will talk about it okay now at least you know that what should be the boundary condition at the fin tip there are four possibilities i would repeat those four possibilities over there and i would just write down the physical description of those four possibilities one is i assume that the fin tip is isothermal i can assume <coughs> convection being taken place on the fin tip conduction is equal to convection third i can consider that fin tip as an adiabatic surface you know that what do you mean by adiabatic insulation no heat transfer and finally you can assume a very long fin so physically you have described everything there are four possibilities is there anything which is coming into your mind about the boundary condition just think about it and let me know okay if, if you if, if you think that there should be some other boundary condition and you can treat it mathematically just let me know okay so otherwise there are four boundary conditions original equation was sorry yes convection plus radiation it can happen it can happen right if you, if you put it equal to t infinity it means you are talking about the adiabatic condition right in a way you are talking about adiabatic condition okay but by the way not mathematically physically it can happen that if t fin t tip becomes equal to t infinity there would be no heat transfer but obviously that is a condition right so t infinity means you are describing temperature on the fin tip just like the first one any other thing no convection would take place on the whole fin yes but we are just talking about the heat temperature profile within the fin obviously the fin is there to increase the surface area 
fin is there to increase the surface area for this kind of equation you have a generalized form of solution and that solution would be theta x would be equal to c1 exponent mx plus c2 exponent minus mx okay this is the generalized solution for this kind of equation now it does not matter what kind of x is there it may be time by the way it may be time this m square would be kind of omega n just for the your vibration system dy dynamical system you would see that there would be omega n in that place if you attach a mass with a spring you would see the same form of ordinary differential equation and instead of theta you would be having some kind of x displacement kind of thing okay so this term would be representing acceleration and this term would be representing that uh, force on the damper oh sorry spring so anyways you would have this kind of solution everywhere in engineering a very simple one and a very known okay now the point is how many coefficients are there unknown c1 and c2 and how many boundary conditions are there obviously two at the fin base you know what is the boundary condition it is the temperature always and uh, remember you need to describe the boundary condition in terms of theta not in terms of t now remember that okay it means you need to uh, take a difference between the temperature and t infinity so this is the condition now my point is uh okay there are four boundary conditions and then we would talk about all those boundary conditions one by one i would talk about this one later on just look at that yes can you see the blue one this expression where the cursor is moving can you see that i would explain i would write it write, write, write it down again okay don't worry so you know that you need to have the values of c1 and c2 by putting some kind of boundary condition there are four possibilities i would talk about those four possibilities one by one okay the first condition is although it is two but i would talk about the infinitely long rod later on this is the first one and this says negligible heat loss from the fin tip it means i am talking about adiabatic fin tip q dot is equal to 0 now what does that mean q dot is equal to 0 means dt by ds sorry dx and obviously it should not be dt by dx it should be d theta by dx kind of d theta by dx should be equal to 0 okay why because this q dot would be related by with this flux flux quantity so at x is equal to l at the fin tip this quantity needs to be zero once you do that you would come up with this expression that theta by theta b is equal to cos hyperbolic m l minus x divided by cos hyperbolic m l if i translate it into temperature form i would say that temperature as a function of x would be equal to t infinity plus t b minus t infinity cos hyperbolic m l minus x divided by cos hyperbolic m l i have just plug in the values of theta right so how how you do it i am not going into that detail but my point is you have boundary conditions you know what is the solution you just need to plug those boundary conditions into it okay it it can be a very good exercise do it at your home that you just need to find out c1 and c2 you know what is the mathematical form of the boundary condition you know how to plug those values back into the governing equation okay and get the values of c1 and c2 out of it right and use some kind of simplification rules 
from your algebra and you would come up with this one so this is tx for a fin where base is at the wall temperature and your tip is adiabatic and the temperature profile is following what cosine hyperbolic form and how is this cosine hyperbolic is coming in you remember those expressions the relation between cos hyperbolic and exponential exponential things you can represent cos as some combination of exponent x plus exponent minus x divided by something 2 or right so you can always simplify those expressions that cos hyperbolic is coming from that side euler form or something like that okay so this is there but anyway this is just the simplification so my point is if you know this tx if you know this tx can you tell me what would be q dot within that fin i am just talking about q dot conduction come on you know tx you know tx i am talking about q dot it's simple fourier law you just need to take the derivative of this t with respect to x just multiply it with area and k and get the answer okay so you know that how to find it out but anyways <coughs> i'm sorry theta over theta b essentially the solution is that theta b should be there at this side so this is theta what is the unknown in this equation this is theta isn't it so your answer should come as sorry theta so that theta b is representing just one thing t b minus t infinity okay just plug those boundary conditions into that expression c1 e raised to power minus mx plus c2 e raised to power mx right and on this side you have theta just plug the values of the boundary conditions into that expression find out the values of c1 and c2 do some kind of simplification and i told you what is the simplification you just need to express the combinations of exponent x and exponent minus x as a function of cosine hyperbolic that's it okay so original answer would be coming as theta theta b is basically on the right hand side and that would be just to by the way why do we use theta by theta b if you remember i told you in your fluid dynamics course that you need to have quantities in non dimensional form you remember that so you always try to represent the quantities in non dimensional form so theta by theta b is what it's a non dimensional thing so just to represent it more effectively you represent it as theta by theta b that's the whole point nothing else okay nothing very technical okay but here on that point you were just considering conduction here convection is also taking place on the whole fin isn't it how on the surface in that previous case is there any kind of convection or other mode of heat transfer not at all right so but we have convection as well on the surface so that is why we would say that this is the profile otherwise there should be a constant profile has there been any uh, only conduction that should be a constant profile temperature okay so let's talk about the second one we specify the temperature i say that on the fin tip we have tl again from that expression plug in the values do the same kind of manipulation combinations of exponent x and minus x and you would come up with this one i would write it down over there again by making the quantities non dimensional theta by theta b equals tl sorry not tl
थीटा बाय थीटा बी थीटा एल थीटा बी साइन हाइपरबॉलिक एम एक्स प्लस साइन हाइपरबॉलिक एम एल माइनस एक्स एंड दिस होल शुड बी डिवाइडेड बाय साइन हाइपरबॉलिक एम एल दिस इज द टेम्परेचर प्रोफाइल विद इन द फिन टिप इफ यू कंसिडर द फिन टिप टू बी एन आइसोथर्मल सर्फिस ओके यू सी दैट ऑल द टेम्परेचर प्रोफाइल्स इन दिस केस वुड बी टेकिंग दिस काइंड ऑफ फॉर्म कॉज हाइपरबॉलिक साइन हाइपरबॉलिक एंड एट मैक्सिमम यू मे बी हैविंग लाइक टेंजेंट हाइपरबॉलिक एंड ऑल दोज थिंग्स आर देयर बाय बिकॉज देयर इज समथिंग लाइक ई एक्स एंड ई रेस टू पार माइनस एक्स ओके and i hope you can take its you can convert it into temperature profile and you can take its derivative to find out q dot do you understand that any question no okay let's talk about the third boundary condition and that third boundary condition says that whatever is coming in the same is going out through convection the heat coming in is due to conduction and whatever is going out is due to convection now how can you represent it mathematically obviously conduction equals convection both the q dots are the same so minus kac dt by dx at x equals l x equals l it means i am talking about the fin tip <coughs> is equal to hac t into l minus t infinity now this is what this is kind of a mixed boundary condition isn't it it's a mixed boundary condition some term is carrying the derivative <coughs> and the other term is carrying the unknown only so anyways if you have this kind of uh, boundary condition you would come up with this expression theta by theta b equals cos hyperbolic m l minus x plus h by m k sin hyperbolic m l minus x whole divided by cos hyperbolic m l plus h by m k sin hyperbolic m l okay so this is theta by theta we again convert it into temperature phi uh, temperature form and you can take its derivative to find out q dot and obviously if i ask you what is the temperature at x is equal to 2 let's say what you need to do just plug in 2 over there and get the answer if i ask you what is the heat transfer rate at that particular point you just need to take its derivative obviously heat transfer due to conduction heat transfer due to conduction okay <coughs> so now let's talk about this one infinitely long fin tip if you say infinitely long it means l approaches infinity right and this is by the way although mathematically it is a different quantity just different boundary condition mathematically but physically somehow or the other it is similar to the adiabatic one like for example if i say that the rod is very long it means that temperature when you reaches the fin tip the temperature would almost becomes equal to t infinity it has come down to a position where it becomes almost equal to t infinity or you can say there would be a very small heat transfer i can put it that way as well okay but mathematically how you can describe it l approaches infinity so mathematically l approaches infinity it is a geometric boundary condition not the geometric uh, boundary condition by the it's a geometric condition it is talking about the geometry but physically you know that it is has it has the same meaning as if you have the adiabatic condition on the fin tip right but let's put that uh, mathematical boundary condition over there geometric condition over there and we would see that finally we would come up with a very simple expression theta by theta b equals 
e raised to power minus m x. This is a very simpler condition. Do you understand that? So physically, it's the same thing. But taking another route by introducing some kind of geometric parameter, putting it equal to infinity, or let's say just uh, getting it approach, approaching infinity, so that would give you a very simpler expression. Exponent raised to power minus m x. Simple as that. All the cosine hyperbolics and sine hyper hyperbolics are not there. <coughs> Understood? Clear? Okay. 